This is going to be about the darkness in the drink. In Proverbs 23, verses 29 through 25, it says, Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. And that is about someone... Who uses alcohol. Everything in those verses is negative. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? But let's look at the darkness involved with drinking alcohol. Number one, it's desirable and deceptive. I put these two together because it is deceptive because it is desirable. Verse 31 in Proverbs 23 says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, but it moveth itself aright. Many men will struggle at the sight of strong drink. So the Bible says, Look not thou upon the wine. And many men aren't affected by the billboard ads or alcohol commercials. But for some, these advertisements make alcohol desirable. They can just look at it and be tempted. And we all have different temptations. For some, when they look upon the wine, they feel as if they can't escape the temptation. And for this reason, the Bible says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red. Something that is desirable to the eyes is much more deadly. If it appears nasty and ugly, then most people look away. 2 Corinthians 11.14 talks about Satan being transformed into an angel of light, and many times the wicked things appear as something good to the eyes. All of the beer commercials and alcohol ads in the magazines portray strong drink as something good. All of the idols and superstars in Hollywood drink and get drunk. People idolize them and want to copy what they do. And what happens at the end of the NBA Finals? They bring out champagne and they party. Even the professed Christian athletes that people look up to, that they're just such great Christians, they will get drunk and party with the other lost athletes on national television. And this world uses alcohol to celebrate. It uses alcohol to look elegant and sophisticated. And all of the big time stars drink wine at their fancy parties. And if you have seen inside the houses of the movie stars and the sports athletes, they all have strong drink in their refrigerators. All of the good good old boy country singers and the Suppose great Christian women country singers glorify getting drunk in their music. For young people, getting drunk is portrayed as something that is cool and grown up. The country music is full of songs about getting drunk. And these are from artists who are from the Bible Belt. They've heard the gospel They've been raised in church, most of them, as they talk about in their songs. And most of them, probably even saved, they've probably heard the gospel and believed the gospel, but they're living like the world, and they're glorifying getting drunk in their songs, and they're giving all these young teenagers and whoever else a false idea of getting drunk. They're making them think it's okay to Live for God one day, and then the next day you can go out and get drunk and party. And some believe alcohol is just something you do when you're with friends, no matter the activity. Many people see giving out a can of Bud Light as a way to greet a visitor. 
And they say, you want a beer? And that's when you should say, no, I don't, I don't touch the stuff. I don't look up on the stuff as the Bible says. But strong drink and the advertisements is connected with friends, good times, parties, youth, fame, fortune, and everything that is positive. But as you saw, it's connected with everything negative in the Bible. And the end of alcohol is death. And sometimes the end comes faster for some than it does for others. Sometimes a young person can become a drunk and live out a horrible, miserable life as a jobless, nasty, filthy, sinful, fornicating drunk. While another young teenager can get drunk just one time, get in his car, and then hit another car head on, and his head is outside of the car, the rest of his body is wrapped around a tree somewhere, with his blood all over the windshield. After one drink, while his girlfriend or friend's body who was in the car with him is laying lifeless in a ditch. And then the other car could have been a mother and her baby, innocent, and they were killed because they were drunk driving. And the ambulance gets there, the police get there, and both of them are smushed and dead in a drunk driving accident. That may have been their first time getting drunk for those young people, but the pleasures of sin only last for a season, and the end thereof are the ways of death. Why don't they show you that scene in the ads? Why don't they show you a worthless drunk coming home after he spent his money on beer and drugs? Why don't they show the uh, idiot coming home and beating his wife and kids. Why don't they show you the statistics about serial killers and alcohol? Seventy uh, percent of serial killers admit that in their households there was at least someone who was an alcoholic or drug addict. Growing up in a household where substances are abused can lead to terrible outcomes. For example, they say disorders, depression, Behavioral problems, feelings of inadequacy can be some of the outcomes serial killers face when growing up with this atmosphere of alcohol. And 27.5% of serial killers' mothers consumed alcohol during their pregnancy, which can cause brain defects and rage of violence in the child. Also, many serial killers admit that they started consuming or doing drugs since a very young age, some as early as eight years old. Why don't the ads show you the connection between serial killers and alcohol? And strong drink is made to look desirable, yet it's deceptive. Why don't they have a Bud Light or Budweiser commercial where a man drinks it and then takes a rope and hangs himself? or takes a gun and blows his brains on the wall for his wife and kids to see when they get home. Alcohol is involved in over a quarter of all suicides in the U.S. Suicide is 120 times more prevalent among adult alcoholics than in the general population. Alcohol abusers have higher rates of both attempted and completed suicide than non-abusers, and more than one third of suicide victims. Genesis 3 6 says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Why do people start drinking? Because the serpent makes it look desirable. Just like he did with Eve. He made it look desirable. She thought it would make her wise to do something that God told her not to do. And to top it off, it was probably a vine tree where grapes were growing. And maybe the devil told you getting drunk would make you cool or popular or sophisticated. Maybe he told you it would make you fit in at the parties at work. It is deceptive in that you think you're going to turn out better after you drink it. But you never turn out better by disobeying what God said. Eve thought she was going to be wise and be as a God. But she turned out worse. 
In Proverbs 20 and verse 1, it says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Not only is it deceptive and desirable, it is also defiling. Proverbs 23, 29 through 35 says, Who hath woe, who hath sorrow, who hath contentions, who hath babbling, who hath wounds without cause, who hath redness of eyes, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself awry. At the last it biteth like a serpent, and stingeth like a natter. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. What is alcohol known for? It is known for getting people in a condition where they will fornicate and go to bed with anybody. It makes your eyes behold strange women and your heart to utter perverse things. The country singers laugh at this and say, you have your beer goggles on, meaning you think all the girls are pretty and desirable the more you drink. If you get drunk, you'll go to bed with somebody you're not supposed to be going to bed with. Getting drunk leads you to defiling yourself with somebody else. Leviticus 18.20 says, Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. When you get drunk and fornicate, you are defiling yourself. Leviticus 18.23 says, Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Uh, there have been people who got drunk and had relations with animals. Bestiality. In 1 Timothy 1.10, it talks about those who defile themselves with mankind. You defile yourself when you commit the sin of sodomy. There's straight people who get drunk and commit sodomy. Did you know that the alcohol is so vile and wicked and nasty that drunks have defiled themselves with the same sex, even though they're not homosexual, and with animals, even though that's something they would be repulsed by if they weren't drunk. But they did this under the influence of alcohol. Did you know that it is so nasty that straight men have had Sex with another man. Imagine getting drunk, waking up next to another man when you sober up. They abuse themselves with mankind under the influence of alcohol. And some men will turn into nasty, vile sodomites and people who commit bestiality and every wicked sexual sin when they get drunk. Some men commit adultery with another man's wife when they get drunk. And this results in broken up families, broken hearts of the kids and spouses that weren't involved. Alcohol is perverted and alcohol is selfish. Drunkenness is a work of the flesh. Galatians chapter 5 calls it a work of the flesh. And getting drunk will turn you into even more of a sex pervert than you already are. Habakkuk 2.15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Some men are so ugly and nasty that the only way they can get someone to commit perversion with them is by getting them drunk or drugged up. They defile themselves and everyone around them. And someone drinking always has to get people around them involved in the drinking. And this way, when they get drunk and act like an absolute moron, people won't be laughing at them, they'll be laughing with them. But a Christian has absolutely no business drinking strong drink. And anybody who says you can drink as long as you don't get drunk is deceived by the devil and they are help helping the devil lie to you. In the Old Testament, it says this in Leviticus 10.9. It says, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generation. So the priest can't drink wine or strong drink when he goes into the tabernacle. Now in the New Testament, where is the tabernacle? If you're saved... 
that you are the tabernacle. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, as it says in 1 Corinthians six, fifteen through 20. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It is never okay for a Christian to even taste or, or to drink alcohol. Then when you get drunk and commit fornication, you're sinning against your own body. You are defiling the temple. In the book of Revelation, in it God says, He has made you a king and a priest. That's if you're saved, you have been made a king and a priest. You aren't supposed to be drinking strong drink. It's forbidden. So alcohol is deceptive, it's desirable, it's defiling, and it's destructive. In verse 35 of Proverbs 23, it says, They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. You are going to be an addict, a drunkard, and a low-life scum if you drink alcohol. It will destroy your life. It is destructive to your family and your friends. It destroys your reputation. And many successful people started out drinking, and now they're laying under a bridge somewhere. Now they are on the side of the road begging people for money so they can, can continue their disgusting, vile habit of being a nasty drunk. Even though they vomit and fall and hurt themselves, they get their wounds without cause. They wake up the next day and seek it again. And there are people who will steal and hurt their own grandparents for money, for their drugs, and for their booze. They're so pathetic and nasty. They will pawn their own mother or grandmother's wedding ring so they can get money for their disgusting habit. They will neglect their kids and leave them hungry so they can fulfill the desires of their own flesh. A nasty drunk or druggie will suck out the life and destroy everyone in his family and his friends around him. And there are countless families and grandparents who are suffering because of their kids' drug or alcohol problems. The parents love their kids. So they continue to be long-suffering with them while the idiotic drunk or druggie with no fear of God before their eyes will take advantage of their parents and suck the blood right out of them like a leech. And many people... So you have to have more compassion. You have to be more understanding. They just have a disease. They just need help. They just need a Christian counselor. No, they need to get right with God. They need to be born again if they're not. And then they need to open the Bible and read it. It's a possibility, of course, that they're saved. But they need to open the Bible and read it. They need to make an effort to get right with God. They don't just need to go to rehab or a Christian counselor. The power is in God and in prayer and in the book. You can't get over alcohol just by someone babying it out of you. Continuing to baby the drunk or the druggie is just enabling them to continue with their sinful, low-down lifestyle and habits. 1 Corinthians 5.5 5 talks about a saved man being delivered over to, over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. If you stay in unconfessed and unrepentant sin as a Christian, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you are going to lose everything else. If you're an alcoholic and you're a Christian, alcohol will destroy you. It's going to destroy your health, your testimony. It's going to destroy your fellowship. And if you continue in it, the devil will take your life. You'll be turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. The devil makes you think drinking will make everyone think you're cool. And maybe it will at first and it will eventually make everyone think you're nasty. You'll eventually be so nasty that nobody can stand to even be around you except someone else who drinks. And alcohol is deadly because it is deceptive. It's desirable. It's defiling. It's destructive. It is also deadly because of its devilish connections. Witches, wizards, the occult all use alcohol to get hooked up with devils and unclean spirits. A practicing witch says this. Alcohol-based potions are basically prepared alcoholic beverages that are meant to be added to beverages. Uh, the alcohol increases their shelf life or may be a magical ingredient itself. And many deities as well as the ancestors have their favorite liquor. So adding a specific kind 
may speak to different energies in the drinker. And they say alcohol is said to come from the Arabic word alcohol. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, which means body eating spirit. So alcohol comes from that Arabic word meaning body eating spirit. This is a practicing witch that's saying this, that he uses alcohol based potions. Why do you think they call it wine and spirits when you drink alcohol? You are drinking devils into your body. And remember how I told you there is a connection between suicides and alcohol? This is also because of the unclean spirits you pick up from drinking. A boy possessed with the devil would many times throw himself into the fire and into the water in Matthew seventeen fifteen. And the pigs inhabited by the unclean spirits and the gospels ran off a deep place into the sea and committed suicide. Uh, the devil possessed man in Mark chapter 5 was always crying and cutting himself with stones. Drinking makes you full of sorrow. Who hath sorrow? As it says in Proverbs. The ones that have sorrow are the ones that tarry long at the wine. So alcohol has devilish connections. But alcohol also leads to other sins. One example, you're unable to hold down a job. In 2 Thessalonians 3.10 it says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that, it, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. What drunk would like that verse? 1 Timothy 5, eight says, But if any provide not for his own, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Most of the time a drunk can't hold down a job because they have hangovers in the mornings and won't get up. It makes them lazy and sluggish, so they are unable to complete any of the tasks and they can't compete with any of the workers. I have worked with people who are drunks and they sweat just from walking. Uh, I'm not saying this is true for every drunk, but the majority I have worked with are slow and lazy. Drinking alcohol doesn't make you better. Many drink drunks can't get jobs because they have criminal records from doing things while drunk. They ruin their name and reputation. And Ecclesiastes 7 1 says, A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death and the day of one's birth, Proverbs 22 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Do you want to lose your good name because you get drunk? And go out and do stupid things that you would not do if you weren't drunk. Drunks are unreliable. I have worked with drunks who actually show up to work drunk. Uh, they actually continue to come in later and later and later. They get more late every day because they're too lazy to get out of bed. And they can barely do the job. Drinking is beyond filthy, nasty, and disgusting. I remember before I was even saved and I overheard someone talking about getting drunk. And they said, I got so drunk last night I couldn't stop puking. And they said it like they were just thrilled that that happened. I'm thinking, how is that fun? That's disgusting. I've been in a person's house who was drunk the previous night and they had dried vomit all over the toilet. And you know what? They were too lazy and drunk to clean up the puke. So any time they would have to go to the bathroom, they would just sit in the puke because they're nasty and they're lazy. Isaiah 28, 7 and 8 says, But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They're swallowed up of wine. They're out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment, for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Alcoholics are weak and sissy. When the Bible describes someone who can barely even stand up, they use a drunkard for a similitude. 
In Job 12, 25, it says, They grope in the dark without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man. Psalms 107, 27 says, They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. I have seen a drunken man try to pick a fight with a nine-year-old kid. You completely lose any judgment when you get drunk. But what does the old drunk say to justify his sin? He says, well, Jesus drank wine. And it's blasphemy to say that Jesus drank wine. It's blasphemy to use the Lord Jesus Christ to justify your sin. And they'll use the verse Luke 7.34 where it says the Son of Man is come eating and drinking and you say, Behold a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. It's funny that they, they use Luke 7.34 where the people calling Jesus a gluttonous and a wine bibber is his accusers. When you say that Jesus drank wine, you're acting like the Pharisees and his accusers, his enemies. Alcohol is a sin. One drink of alcohol is a sin. And people are always saying, I drink, but I don't get drunk. Well, if you've never gotten drunk, then how do you know how much you can drink before you get drunk? The Bible says don't look at it. But if you're a Christian and you're drinking alcohol and doing drugs, I know it's not going to be easy, but you need to get to God and get victory over this sin. And if you're not saved, don't even worry about stopping drinking. Worry about getting saved, because you can't stop until you get saved, most likely. I mean, there's people who get victory over drinking and things like that, but it's going to be a lot easier for you to get victory over your sins if you'll get saved. You don't quit your sins to get saved. You get saved and then God will help you with your sins. You'll never become sinlessly perfect. But if you'll get saved, get in the Bible, pray, get fellowship with God, He will help you quit drinking alcohol, quit doing drugs, and quit living like the devil. But if you want to be saved... The Bible gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, Paul tells us how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, lived a sinless life and died on the cross to pay for every single one of your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When he rose from the dead that proved he was God. And the reason he had to die was for your sins. That's why it says how that Christ died for our sins. He died because you're a sinner. And that's why you need a savior. is because you have sinned against an almighty God. And you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. If you die in your unbelief, your unbelief of the gospel, then you're going to burn for eternity. You don't just believe Jesus Christ existed. You take it a step further and put your trust in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross to be your payment for your sins. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter how many times you got drunk or whatever you've done while you were drunk. You can still be saved. Uh, Jesus Christ will save any person. He says, Whosoever will. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on Him. And I pray that you'll do that today before it's too late. Because you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You could get in a car tonight drunk and die in a car wreck. You could fall dead right now while you're sitting there by a heart attack. Don't put it off any longer.